Hello, hello, hello. Give you a moment to get on. And while you're getting on, I'm actually going to share this out in a few places and invite some people to watch. Let's see. You know, I got to make sure the technology is working. So if you're watching this recording, first of all, thank you very much. And you can feel free to skip ahead to get to the content. And let's see. I'm getting everything but. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, hold on. All right, there we go. Almost there. All right, awesome. I'm going to share that first there. And I'm going to share this in some other places. And then we're going to get going. Almost there. All right. And let's see if I can do that. I don't want to. There we go. Let's see. Yeah. All right. Lose that a little bit. Uh, invite some people to watch. And then we're going to get going. Okay. All right. So, uh, so if you're watching this, make sure you let me know who you are and where you're from. So I can shout you out and say hello. And we're going to go ahead and get started. Okay, I want to welcome you. My name is Lysandra Everett. I am the Home Biz Tax Lady and uh, here Monday through Friday, nine o'clock ish. When you tune into my show, you're going to hear mainly about tax topics as I am a tax professional, but you're also going to hear about business leadership and really how to do this whole thing called life, how we can do it better together, together. <laughs> but my ultimate goal is to help you win the tax game. Um, so this week I have been focusing on the tax debt collection process. Okay. Um, so really, so here we go. Starting about May timeframe, people that have filed their taxes and oh, start getting letters from the IRS and, you know, demanding payment. And that is the beginning of the collection process. And through that collection process, there's a lots of different options. You can pay your tax debt. You can um, establish a payment plan. And, you know, you can have an offer and compromise. And if you just completely ignore the IRS, they will levy, uh, place a levy against your stuff. They will, you know, this is where we hear about tax liens and such. But the main thing that people hear about are, is, is the offer and compromise. And so let me stop and say this. The information that I share with you here is for presentation purposes only. Everybody's tax situation is different. And I highly recommend that you contact your tax professional regarding your specific tax situation. Now, um, so let's talk about the offer and compromise, because what people want to know is how does the IRS really determine how much they're going to accept? So in 2015, which is the last data I saw, the average tax debt was settled for about $7,500. And uh, that was an, you know, a total of about $2.4 million, I do believe. Don't quote me on the numbers, but it's about $27,000 in 2015. 
So, um, you know, $7,500, you know, that's on average. So that really means absolutely nothing because it's lumping everybody together, assuming they all have the same amount of debt. And this is what was settled. So that's just some G whiz information that really means absolutely nothing to you. But just to understand that the process does work. It takes some time, but it does work. So how do we get to the offering compromise that the IRS will accept? Uh, first of all, let's talk about the two different types of offers and compromise. First, there is the lump sum payment. And what that means is, first of all, there's a $186 application fee. And when you submit that fee, you must also submit 20% of the amount that you are offering. And with the lump sum payment, that means that you are agreeing that your tax liability, whatever that, uh, if that offer is accepted, will be paid for in five or fewer payments in five or fewer months. Okay. So that's the lump sum. Now, then there is the um, the payment plan, which again is also a $186 application fee and uh, the amount of your first payment. And this is saying that with this offer that your payments will be made in six to 24 months, 24 months being the max. So you have to send this stuff, these payments in and those payments are not, are not refundable. And while your offering compromise is being considered, you have to keep making payments. Even beyond the offering compromise, once you have paid that tax liability, whatever that agreed upon offer is, you must also be compliant for the five remaining five years after that. Or the original tax liability can be reinstated. OK, so that is the, the stuff to know about the offers and compromise. Now, how does the IRS determine what is an acceptable amount? Well, keep in mind that the IRS, it has 10 years to collect a debt. So they're looking at, you know, all of your stuff, which I'm going to go over in a minute. They're looking at all of your stuff and saying, OK, if I'm looking at this tax debt over 10 years, will we be able to collect the entire thing? If the answer is yes, they're not going to be really interested in compromising. If the answer is no, then that's when offers and compromise really work for you. Now, so when you see these commercials talking about, you know, settling tax debt for pennies on the dollar, does it happen? Absolutely. But understand that it doesn't happen that way for everybody because pennies on the dollar, that's a really general term because when you hear pennies on the dollar, you think a very low amount, but pennies on the dollar can be anywhere from one penny to 99 pennies <laughs> on the dollar. Okay. So, you know, so that's, it's not, when you see those commercials, yeah, it does happen that way. But listen, people that are paying, you know, five cents on the dollar or whatever it is for their tax debt, these people have nothing. They have no assets, no nothing. OK, so just keep that in mind. All right. So what comes into play when we're when the IRS is deciding what they will accept? OK, so they have this great form called a 433A. I don't even know if you can see that from the glare. All right. There you go, 433A. It's a glare. Finally, the sun is coming out here. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna go through what is on the 433A. They're looking at your employment. You know, how much are you earning at the time? And understand this too, you know, what, you know, sometimes people get into tax debt where they might be making six figures one year and then the next year they've lost that job, okay? So, you know, that's how sometimes tax debt can happen. But anywho, so they look at your wages. What are you currently earning? How long you've been working there? And, you know, how, how often do you get paid? And they want to know other fi financial information. If you are part of a lawsuit, if you have... Um, have you lived outside the U.S. for six months or longer? Are you the beneficiary of a trust, a state or life insurance policy? Are you the fiduciary or contributor of a trust? Do you have a safe deposit box? 
And then they look at your cash on hand, how much money you got in the bank. You know, they want to know account numbers, the account balance. They want to know your investments. Do you have stocks, bonds? Do you what available credit do you have? Do you have credit cards? How much is on those credit cards? Um, you know, so your total available credit. Do you have do you own or have any interest in uh, any life insurance policies with cash value? Uh, and so they go and look at your total available cash. Then they look at your real property, your your home. OK, and they're looking what they're looking for is the equity. So if you own a three hundred thousand dollar house and you've got two hundred thousand dollars worth of equity, guess what? That's money that can be used to pay down your tax debt. OK, they're looking at your personal vehicles. Do you have cars, boats, RVs? You know, what do you have? And then they're looking at all of your personal assets, your furniture, jewelry, collections, all of this stuff and looking at your total equity. Then they look at your monthly income versus your expenses. And this is where it starts to get a little hinky for people because the IRS is looking at what you're spending versus the national average uh, and, and making a determination of whether or not you can pay, you know, what you can pay for your tax debt. So now every locality is different, okay? And this is what's gonna be important for you to know because, you know, I've got some friends in the Seattle area and I saw a post where it said that, you know, $72,000 is considered, uh, you know, is considered a poverty level or some foolishness like that. 72 grand a year, okay, you need to not live in that area. <laughs> But the point is that every state and locale is different. So, but the IRS is using a national average. And so if what you have to spend is above the national average, you're going to have to provide proof of that. Okay. So they look at um, your, again, your wages, your, any rental income, any business income, your pension, social security, child support, alimony, any kind of income that you have coming in is, um, subject to tax debt with, with the exception of unemployment. Okay. I don't think unemployment is in there now. Um, and then it looks at your total living expenses. Yes. Your food and clothing, you know, your utilities, what it costs to operate your vehicle, public transportation, health insurance, um, you know, court ordered uh, payments, child care, life insurance, just um, all of your total living expenses. And then they make a determination of what you can pay. Now, here's the deal. In order for the IRS to, you know, to accept an offer and compromise, again, they're going to look at what you can afford to pay, uh, you know, over a 10 year period of time to see what they're going to be able to collect from you. But what you also need to understand is that you know, what you might think of as a hardship for you is not a hardship for the IRS. Let me give you an example. If you're spending $500 a month to have your kid in private school, that is not the IRS's concern, okay? Your kid can go to public school for free and that $500 can go towards your tax debt liability. All right. So, you know, so what you have to do is, you know, really, and this is what the IRS does is takes a hard look at what your expenses are, compares that to the national average, and then decides what amount that you, what amount you should be able to pay for um, for your offering compromise. OK, so, again, if what they if when they look at what you have and determine that, yeah, what you can pay, you can pay this out over 10 years, then they're not going to be willing to work with you. But if they look out over 10 years based on what you can afford to pay, then they might accept you know, the, the offer and compromise, okay? And when you submit for these offers and compromise, they can be accepted or they can be rejected. It is not an automatic, okay? So when you submit for an offer and compromise, again, you have to keep making these payments until they say yay or nay, and this money is non-refundable. So. You can also appeal if, you know, if they reject your offer, you have 30 days to appeal the ruling. Now, what you also need to, um, what you also need to keep in mind is that this is a time intensive process. Okay. 
It, it really is because it takes them some time. It takes you some time, but there are certain deadlines that have to be met. And when you go outside of those, then it just doesn't work out. Now, the other thing that you need to keep in mind that, that I did not mention earlier is that in order for you to even be considered for an offering compromise, you have to be current with all of your tax filings. So if you haven't filed all of your taxes and you have one year where you owe a tax debt, but you haven't filed those other taxes yet, they're not going to be looking even considering uh, an offering compromise for you because you have not filed those other taxes. So you definitely have to get the other, the missing years done. And, <laughs> and you must remain current for five years after that, because otherwise they can reinstate your tax liability. So when it comes down to, uh, you know, your assets and things, there are certain things that the IRS can't you know, levy against. So, the, you know, if you're in business, tools of the trade, they can't take that. They can't take books for school. They can't take, you know, your clothes and all of that stuff. Okay. There's a whole laundry list, but that's just a few. Um, but, but what they're looking at is your total financial picture of what you have available to pay your taxes. And then they make the determination. So what you have to do is one, You've got to be honest with the IRS. Please do not lie to the IRS. It is just not recommended because they will find out. And when they do find out, it's not going to be good. Um, but, you know, so like I said, when people say they sell for pennies on the dollar, we're talking about somebody that has no assets. They might they don't own a home. They don't own a car. They don't uh, they don't have anything. OK, so. You know, so nobody wants to be in tax debt, but you got to understand that you're not going to be live, living in a, you know, a 10 bedroom, 10 acre mansion and talking about I can't pay my taxes. That's just not necessarily going to work out. <laughs> OK, <laughs> so. You know, so here's the deal. Here's a takeaway from this. Again, this is a, a long process. And one of the rights that you have is the right to representation. So you can contact an enrolled agent like myself, a CPA or a tax attorney to help you with this process and understand that it's the, the great thing is that you, um, it keeps the IRS from calling you. You still get to go about your daily life and then professionals like me deal with the IRS on your behalf. And that's another thing. I think people get confused. And when you have enrolled agents, CPAs and whatnot, they work for you. They don't work for the IRS. OK, but our job is also to keep you legal. OK, that's the important thing. Um, so here's what I recommend. If you have tax debt that you cannot pay, then I highly encourage you to book a consult with me. Let me put that in the comments. There we go. So if you or someone, you know, um, doesn't, you know, has some tax debt that they can't pay, you need some help, then um, it's my, the link is in the comments in order for you to book a consult. Okay. So uh, let me look and see if I have any questions. Let me look. Because I can't see all the questions on here. OK, I don't think so. OK, so it doesn't look like I have any questions or anything, but like I said, if you think of something um, after this, make sure to um, to inbox me and I'm happy to um, to answer your question. And when you book a consult, this consult is for for us to decide, you know, how I can help you. That's what the consult is for. OK. So listen, that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching. And if you got some value from this, make sure to share this out. And um, yeah, make sure you subscribe to my live notifications so you don't miss anything. And if you're watching on YouTube, I would really appreciate you subscribing if you got some value. OK, thanks so much for tuning in. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.